my name is Ashley and I am the Assistant Science Manager here at the Creative Discovery Museum. Today we are going to be learning about the science of weather. But stay tuned till the end so you can hear a little message from our friends at WRCB about weather preparedness. So for this first experiment, I'm going to be using my safety goggles just in case because we are going to be working with fire. So for this experiment, we're going to see what happens to our Earth with our sun, what would happen if we didn't have any water on our planet? Because water is really important for the water cycle, right? So we're gonna pretend that this earth or balloon has no oceans, lakes, rivers, or anything. But for the experiment, this is just a balloon filled with my carbon dioxide from my lungs. And here we're gonna use matches to act as our sun. So I'm gonna light these matches on fire and we're gonna see what happens if we had our sun really close to our earth with no water. You guys ready? Alrighty, let's see. In three, two, one. Our earth would dry up. It wouldn't pop like that, but it would dry up. All right, and now for the second part of the experiment, we're gonna see what happens on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Here we have our balloon or earth and it's, it's filled with water right now, right? Just like our earth. So I'm gonna hold this earth up and I'm gonna introduce the same sun to our planet and see what happens now. So I'm gonna light this match or our sun on fire. We're gonna see what happens. I hope it doesn't pop. Whoa, interesting. It's not popping like the first balloon. But it burned our balloon. The water inside our balloon absorbed all the heat and distributed it between the water, allowing our planet not to dry up or pop like the first balloon. So this goes to show how important the water on our Earth is in our weather system. Let's see the next experiment. So for this next experiment, we're gonna talk about the Bernoulli Principle. And the Bernoulli Principle states that fast moving air creates low pressure. And the opposite is also true. Slow moving air creates really high pressure. So we're gonna see with this hairdryer in my hand, a fast column of air. Now, when I turn it on, will you be able to see the air? No. But you can see the effects of it, right? you can see the fast moving air on my face. So you don't have to see the column of air, but we're gonna see its effects. For this first part of the experiment, I'm gonna take this yellow sphere and we're gonna place it on this really fast column of air. And we're gonna see what happens. Ready? So, while this sphere was on the fast moving air, did it move much? It moved side to side, but it didn't fly in the air, right? Let's see it with a different sphere. I have a beach sphere, and this beach sphere is a little bit lighter than the yellow one. So let's see what happens when we put it on a fast moving air column, just like that. Whoa. So it moves a little bit higher, right? I'm able to move the hairdryer with it. And I was even able to kind of throw it. So let's see a different kind of sphere on this same column of air. I'm gonna use these ping pong spheres. Now they're really small, right? Much smaller than the yellow sphere and the beach sphere. So let's see how this is affected by the same air column. I'm gonna put one on and then a second one on top. Whoa. So these ping pong spheres were able to stay on that same column of air for a little while, right? So fast moving air creates low pressure. And in the next experiment, we're gonna find out how important low pressure is in our weather system with clouds. So for our last experiment, we're gonna learn how to make clouds. So we need three things to have a cloud. We need water moisture, we need soot, and we need an area of low pressure. So we're gonna make a cloud right inside this bottle. So here I have colored water, just so you guys can see it. And I'm gonna use this match. So I'm gonna keep my safety goggles on. And we are going to light this match. We're gonna let it burn for a minute to create enough soot for our cloud. So I'm gonna let this match burn a little bit longer. Let it burn. 
put it out in our water and I'm going to cap it. Cap our bottle. So, what was the last thing we needed? Oh yeah, low pressure. So, when I squeeze our bottle, it's going to create high pressure, right? But when I let it go, it's going to create low pressure, creating a cloud inside. Did you guys see that? I'll do it one more time. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze the bottle to create high pressure, and I'm gonna let it go, and a cloud forms right inside our bottle. Isn't that neat? So thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the science of weather with me. My name is Ashley, and let's go ahead and hear from our friends at WRCB. I'm meteorologist Allison Pryor, and as I study meteorology, that means I learn about the weather. And the cool thing is, the more that you study, the more you learn about weather, the less nervous that you'll be when it's storming outside. But even with the storms, there are a few things we want you to know to be prepared about it. So number one, when there's lightning, if you hear thunder, see lightning, and you're outside, you need to head indoors at least for 30 minutes. Why? Because lightning is hotter than the surface of the sun. So you definitely don't want to be nearby when a lightning bolt strikes. And unfortunately, sometimes these general storms that we have, they can strengthen and become what we call severe storms. When that occurs, there's three things that you need to know. Number one, where. Number two, when. And number three, action. So where? Where are the storms going to occur? Are they gonna happen in your neighborhood? In order to know that, you need to know where you live. So the name of your town, the county you're in, and where to find it on a map. So if you're from Chattanooga, here you are on the map inside Hamilton County in the state of Tennessee. So all of this is really important information. Number two, when? When are the storms happening? Is it gonna be during the day or at nighttime when you're asleep? And number three is the action. This is what you wanna do with your parents, grandparents, siblings, whoever you live with. Identify where your safe place is in your home. You want it to be the lowest portion of your home, such as a basement. And it also needs to be an interior room. So if you don't have a basement, you can do a bathroom or a closet on the ground floor with no windows and away from walls. That's the safe spot to be if there's severe weather, especially a tornado. And once you go there, you also need to have with you an emergency kit. For that emergency kit, there's lots of things that your parents can put in there, but you can help them too to get it ready. So what can you add in there? Well, grab a flashlight and put it in the emergency kit. You also can have a blanket with you. That blanket will help protect you if there's severe weather, but will also make you feel more comfortable and cozy inside of your safe spot. I hope all this weather information is gonna help you feel more prepared and also enjoy all the sunshiny days that we have. Just remember this summer in the sun and the heat to drink plenty of water and put on that sunscreen. Enjoy your day.